Hello, I'm Samuel Thomas. Welcome to today's Between the Lines. Romance. It is not often thought of as being synonymous with the Bible, but there are plenty of great romantic stories. And we have an author who has found a way of pulling out just the greatest of these stories. And today we want to talk with Terry Favash about her book, Ruth and Boaz. Terry, welcome. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Terry, tell us, how did you get started in writing Bible stories, especially biblical narratives? I guess I really started writing biblical narratives out of sheer frustration. Um, I had discovered in my early 20s that I liked to write, that I enjoyed the process. I enjoyed making up characters and telling stories about them. And taking that and adding it in with my love of some of the Bible stories, I went looking in the local libraries and places like that for a good story about Joseph who is one of my favorite Bible characters. And I couldn't find one. I could find stories about Joseph that are what I call sermon books, where they give you this little vignette about part of Joseph's life and then tell you what you're supposed to learn about that. And that was frustrating for me because I wanted the story. Or I could go to the library and I could find books about Joseph that would start out with the biblical character and would end in some alternate universe somewhere, totally leaving the Bible behind. And that frustrated me very much. And I finally decided that if I was going to find a good story about Joseph, I would have to write it myself. And so that's what got me started. So what do you have to go through to pull out this type of information? Because most of us who have done any research on a Bible character go to the typical Bible commentaries mm -hmm. and, you know, those Bible dictionaries, um, things that tell us about the life and times of people in the Bible. What do you do differently? It starts with straight historical research. Uh, my degrees are in history. So, you know, I was trained in how to do historical research. And you start at the library. You go to the library, and when I began, of course, you go to the card catalog. Now you go to the computer. <laughs> but it's, it's exactly the same thing. I look up anything that the library has about that particular period in history. What do we know about it from outside biblical sources? What do we know about the culture? What do we know about just what was happening at that time in the world, in that place? Um, I go through and pull out anything that I can find. For something like Ruth and Boaz, for instance, you're going through a late Bronze Age. That would be the, the secular designation for that time period. So give us a view of what is late Bronze Age. What, is, what did it look like as far as how people lived, how they related to each other, their customs and, and family settings and family traditions and maybe even family structures? In the late Bronze Age, almost everything was connected one way or another to the family. It was very group oriented. That's very, very different from our culture today. Particularly here in Western civilization, we are very individual oriented. That uh, thought pattern was totally foreign to what would have been going on back in the time of Ruth and Boaz. Everything was connected to the group. Your identity was connected to the group. Your survival was connected to the group. If you did not have a group, literally you died. Now, was that because people wouldn't care about you or exactly. that individualism really showed a detachment from society? Yes, individualism was very dangerous. And so you, you didn't do it because you needed the support of a group to find food, to stay alive, you know, to, to take care of you, to give you a place to live. And if you didn't have that, then you were fair game for anyone and anything. Now, late Bronze Age, as far as a time period is concerned, of course, we're talking about in the B.C. era. Uh, mm -hmm. what, give, give us some years so we can mentally go there with you. 
Late Bronze Age, it would probably be right around um, 1400 BC to 1000 BC. Um, things are very iffy around that time period because, of course, whether it's Late Bronze or Early Iron Age depends on which metal was being used mostly for tools. Now, can I stretch your history a little bit? If we're dealing with that time period, what else was happening in other places aside from what was going on in the context of Ruth and Boaz? And if we would talk about other kingdoms or other places in, in, in the world like Egypt or maybe Europe mm -hmm. or Mesopotamia, what, what's happening at that time period? Um, one of the, the best ways that I can answer that question is to say the Trojan War okay. happened just shortly before Ruth and Boaz lived. And it would have been known and discussed, you know, throughout the ancient Near East. There was a great deal of trade that went on. There was a lot of interconnection between cultures. And the, the Israelites, of course, at the time were kind of off by themselves up in the hills. But a lot of that would have filtered down to them. So you have, um, you have civilizations to the north. You've got um, the Greek civilizations in the Mediterranean Sea. You've got Egypt. Um, Assyria is beginning to become important around this time. And, of course, Babylon was always, always um, very important culturally throughout that, that entire um, part of the world. At so, that time. So let's set up this story of, of Ruth and Boaz before we go to break. What's really going on in this story of Ruth and Boaz? Is it, is it a story of romance? Is it a story of chance? Is it a story of obligation and commitment? It's a story of survival. It is, um, as I have introduced the book, it is really a harvest story where you start with just seeds and eventually you come to have a full, complete harvest. And at that time period, in the culture that Ruth and Boaz lived in, your harvest was literally your life because that was your food. You didn't have the harvest. There's no place you can go to buy. So it's a story of survival. It's the story of a woman who has nothing and who takes with her a belief in a foreign god who goes to a foreign place where she has no one really and trusts the Lord to give her a full harvest and he does. Now it's, it's interesting because Ruth and Boaz has always been one of the most gripping stories that I've appreciated as far as a interpersonal relationship uh, out of the Bible. But when you think about Ruth, you're thinking about a person who had to be very disconnected from a lot of the life of Israel, even though she was with her mother-in-law mm -hmm. for a period of time. Um, am I correct in that? Oh, she was. She would have been viewed with extreme suspicion as soon as she crossed the Jordan. She left everything that she had, and she probably had quite a bit back in Moab, and traded it all because she felt there's a God here who will help me.